Hey everybody, this is Brian at Audiohead. We have a very special edition today. The 12 portable DACs reviewed. This is an updated version of another video, nine portable DACs reviewed, which you can see uh, the link right here. Ding! Uh, if you click on that link, it'll take you to nine portable DACs reviewed. Uh, which has a wider range of other ones. This is a, an update to that. We got a couple more DACs in, so we're up to 12 total here on the portable front. The only DAC that's remained that's our benchmark is the, um, the Dragonfly right here. This one was included in the previous video, and I'm kind of just using it as a little bit of a benchmark for these. Uh, the prices for these specific DACs, uh, we have the HTR micro streamer here. It comes in around 180. This one is 250. Then this is one that did appear in the last video called the Dragonfly by AudioQuest. It's a really good DAC for 250. This is the iFi iDAC that comes in around 300. And this is the ALO International that is 600. So I have them aligned by price here in order. I've decided to include the AudioQuest Dragonfly as our point of reference in this video. It does a pretty good job for $250 and it kind of gives you an idea of where things go from there up and down. Uh, the first DAC I'm going to start out with here is portable, powered by USB. It's called the HTR micro streamer. As you can see here, it is a, quite a tiny design. One of the more smaller DACs out on the market today. You can see that it's even, um, it's about twice the width of the Dragonfly, but not much wider. This one does connect um, with a USB cable, however, not, in a, it doesn't have the straight up tip that the Dragonfly does to plug directly in. So it does require a separate cable. So it is different from the Dragonfly in that regard. Uh, like the Dragonfly, which also has uh, the Dragonfly color changes to indicate file, you can see here the file size is located along here with writing and that it lights up on the side there. So this one does actually let you know what file size you're driving into this the DAC here. You also notice the difference from the Dragonfly here with um, there's actually a line out and a headphone out. So they're separated whereas the Dragonfly combines those two functions into one uh, thing. And it complicates uh, the output and how it interacts with the software just a little bit. So that might be a bonus. I, the Meridian uh, Explorer is the same way. The other new DAC that's out it has two separate um, jacks, which I prefer so you don't have to mess with it on the software side too much. It's a little bit more plug and go. Uh, but, you know, it, it works either way. With this streamer, it aligns pretty much with the price once again along these lines. Performance is not as shiny and crisp as the rest of these decks. However, I did notice a very distinct upgrade from the headphone jack in my Apple MacBook Air laptop. So it's not the best performer of this bunch, but there is a value to it in that it is an upgrade from your standard headphone jack on a computer which can have a noisy background but most importantly the resolution was just a lot better. It was very good in terms of um, matching for in-ear monitors and, and more uh, low sensitivity kind of headphones. Um, it didn't quite have the power, the other drawback is it didn't quite have the power to drive really to hard to drive headphones. As you can see from the size, it's not meant for giant full-size headphones. Uh, it will work, but it's not ideal. So 
if you start to get like really, really high impedance, hard to drive headphones, this one is not the perfect match for that. So those are the two main drawbacks. But then again, it's the cheapest of these three. And like I said before, I definitely found it to be an upgrade from uh, just a standard headphone jack. So that's pretty cool, it's pretty exciting. A great way to kind of dip your toe in the water if you're looking to just kind of see what happens when you do this. And also with the extra line out, and the indicators, those are two big um, pluses in my book. I like that in a DAC. As I said, the Dragonfly uh, here is a benchmark for everything else we have on here. It is 250 and it offers really good value for the price and is obviously one of the great performers um, because of that. Single output through that jack that also provides a headphone amplifier. As I said before, this Dragonfly um, light here will actually change colors depending on what uh, file resolution you send to the device, which is also pretty cool because it's not as blatantly obvious as this. It's kind of more of a subtle, fun thing because the colors change. So I think that's a great nod to a good design. Uh, once again, you can. I'm gonna I'll put the link up here. Uh, to show you the full review with the other nine DACs uh, where this is included in that. So you can get a little bit more details there in regards to the scope, what, what's out there. Now in the middle here you can see we have the iFi DAC called the iDAC. Um, it's a little bit larger in size, it's the largest one I have here, uh, but it is powered and it's important to mention too that both of these are also powered, and including this one, through the USB port, which I find to be a, a nice kind of, um, almost a definition of portable in my book, because if it needs a wire, it's not, it really knocks it down on how mobile it can be. So this one, same deal, uh, por powered completely by this. The signal comes through there, the power comes through there. Uh, very cool, a little bit bigger. Uh, has three indicator lights here. These do not indicate resolution, however, they do let you know if it's getting a signal, if it's connected and it's powered up, which is all nice to know. On the front we have uh, 3.5 millimeter input for small headphone jacks, the volume knob, and then these two line level outputs. So you can see we're kind of moving up the scale here in terms of what you can output. These are more general RCA, so if you're going to a stereo, you won't need to have a separate adapter. Pretty kind of cool if you want to think about it like that. The main difference between this one and this one, and I will say this, this one costs $50 more than this. The performance in the DAC is, is more of an, a matter of opinion than it is necessarily a, this one is better than this one. They sound slightly different. I think the Dragonfly has more of a unique sound, but this one for the, re, for the region it's in, the $300 range, it do, the DAC does perform at that level, if not a little bit above. I really enjoy the sound of this thing overall crisp, clear. The main benefit, the main plus over the Dragonfly for this one is that the headphone output is much more. This is one gain stage, similar to these two, but not this one. This has three gain. This is one gain stage and just the volume knob here. So the drawback is also part of the plus in this case. The plus is that it's got a lot of gain. So it actually drives harder to drive headphones louder than the other, these, these other two, even though it's close in price point. It's got a lot of juice. The downside to the one gain setting is that it doesn't mat pair so well with sensitive in-ear monitors. So there's that. It's a, I wouldn't recommend this pairing for in-ear monitors. This one does pretty fine and dandy with in-ear monitors. That's nice. So there's not a lot of hiss. These are better for in-ear monitors. This one is definitely more for full-size monitors, which if that's your thing, it's gonna work out great. Um, it's a nice kind of clear, clean sound overall between the, da between the DAC and the headphone monitor on this one. So for the size, even though it's a little bit larger, I think it kind of works. It, it's, it, it's kind of like fits with a bigger head si headphone size. And also, they do sell, this is one of the products that has a, a, an appendage that you can buy for even more, that actually um, has kind of like a small power conditioner for the USB, where the power comes in, and then it cleans up the power, supposedly, to it. So there's a companion piece to this one that's kind of interesting that you could 
potentially stack on top to have a double stack. On the far right here, we have um, one of AOL's newest entries. And out of this bunch, it does cost the most, but it's also my favorite pick of the bunch. Um, it comes in around $600. Occasionally, it'll go on sale uh, for $500. But right now, I do believe it's priced at $600. For $600, this actually has quite a bit more features than the other three. But then again, it's you know almost twice the cost, if not more than that. Uh, this one has a battery supply inside of it. The fit and finish is great on this thing. I think it's very polished and nice. I like the black quite a bit. Nice stylings, nice knobs. Switches are solid. Nice design. Battery powered. USB input here. But also you'll notice we have balanced input, which is quite a different change from everything else. Not too many on the portable front have balanced inputs. Actually, there's very few relative to how many others. So that's a huge bonus if you're into balanced. You can run something balanced into here. Now you'll see this is the input, USB input, and here's where you charge it. On this side, we actually have the input for single-ended, which is similar to, well, none of these actually have that. So there's another feature. Uh, on this side, you actually see a single-ended input, which is unique to this particular amp. None of these other ones actually offer uh, analog single-ended input into them and out. So this is more of a combination of a dedicated input amplifier with a DAC, which is you know, pretty exceptional because it's way more versatile in that than, than these other three. Now, you can see here in the front, there's actually a three gain switch. So we really start to gain a lot more versatility in terms of what headphones can be used with the three different gains that are available. I did find in-ear monitors, this matches extremely well with in-ear monitors at the lowest gain setting. It actually clicks on here. And on the highest setting, there's you know quite a bit of gain and you can really drive almost any headphone with this. So the versatility is there, inputs and outputs. It even has um, balanced headphone outputs. I run with an adapter this to my LCD3s. Very, very good. I do believe that there is a difference between the single ended and the balanced connectors here. At least with the LCD3, it seems a little more um, obvious to me. Uh, as if it's your, if it's better or not, that I think falls more under terms of preference, but for the most part, most people I kind of talk to agree that the balance, at least with the LCD3, is kind of a fun thing to play with. Uh, in terms of overall compactness, you can see the size is even smaller than these guys. This one's a bit heavier than the rest because of the battery that's included with it, but overall, Really great dynamics on this unit. I really enjoy it a lot. Um, the bass impact is, is pretty slamming. I think that the amp itself is a notch above the other three featured here. Uh, and the DAC, the DAC is, is, is pretty good too. It's definitely not the best I've ever heard, but I think it's befitting of the, of the amp that's in there. So as for a all-in-one package, this thing's pretty spectacular as well. But to me, really, that it's the headphone amplifier that shines the most on this puppy. So it's pretty good. But like I said, six hundred dollars um, is a lot of chunk. Of, is a pretty big chunk of change to a lot of people. So you know, it might be something that is in your range or not. If not, there are many fine alternatives coming all the way down to the one hundred and eighty. So um, this is my one of my favorite portable amplifiers at the moment. Things keep coming in and going out. As you can see, we're up to you know twelve. Uh, DACs right now, so it just keeps coming and coming. But right now, this is one of my favorites here, and it's not just for the amp. It's I mean, the balance, the inputs and outputs are very fun to play with. It kind of adds a little more color to the hobby. So that is what I have on tap right now.